Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. The other thing we wanted to talk about is the Attorney General, William Barr. He's been going around Congress, right? He has a memo. Some people aren't too happy about this memo. What have you guys heard about it? It's basically a gun, a gun registration mm -hmm. type deal. That's mm -hmm. what I think about it. It's unnecessary stuff on there, mm -hmm. and the it's an expansion of background checks. Right. So, do you guys have an article out on this yet, or? Um, I did not write an article. I'm sure there is one up right. there, though. Yeah, I'll um, I'll go in and, and and pull up an article. So, for anyone who's wondering exactly what's happening here, obviously, a Congress has been pushing for to. Um, to what they call close the, the the gun show, right? The gun show loopholes, they want expanded background checks. They've been uh, pushing really, really hard for that and a bunch of other things, right? I don't really think that there's anything that's gonna make them uh, super happy here. They're gonna, they're gonna get what they can get, make the small cuts and then move on, you know, hit us with the like paper cuts and then move on with other things. So one of the things that's been circulating with the attorney general is this background um, check memo. Um, I don't know, before I, I was getting ready to make another video on this myself here, cause I've been, you know, putting up these commentary videos, John. And the first question that came to my mind is like, what the hell does the attorney general have to do with making laws? Is that, can, you, can someone explain, <laughs> you know, how yeah, does that work? <laughs> it's supposed to go through Congress, uh, every, everything's all screwed yeah. up. I mean, obviously Congress makes the laws, it goes to the president, but since when does the attorney general shop these kind of things? Or has this happened before? Maybe just like where a lot of us are paying attention to it right now. It's happened before. Uh, it's pretty common for, mm -hmm them to like start shopping things saying hey this is a possible compromise and stuff yeah. like that yeah um because i know lots of people because they're that's one thing i've seen with people who are sending me this kind of stuff people are always communicating with me through social media and one of the things they're saying is like why is the attorney general uh, involved in the process of making the law when he's supposed to enforce it i guess this does happen he sits um he's on he's one of the president's advisors right yeah, he's one of the president's advisors. When mm -hmm. he brought this to Congress, he said that he had the full support of the president. The White House has pushed back and said, no, we have no idea what this is, basically. Yeah, uh, I know. I know Trump. I think Trump was visiting the border and he was talking about this stuff today. And uh, I'm looking up here. He says, I won't do anything to hurt the Second Amendment. I don't know if I believe that. Huh? Said, yeah, he said, I won't do anything to hurt the Second Amendment, but we're going to have to make some compromises. Yeah, well, but it's the Second Amendment. Yeah, uh, first of all, his statement that he won't do anything to hurt the Second Amendment, I don't believe him because, in my personal opinion, he's already done some things to hurt the Second Amendment. Um, or Obama to hurt yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and and like let's let's talk like bump stock, the bump stock uh, ban that he did with an executive order. Basically, he took a piece of plastic, not even attached to a firearm, and made it into a machine gun. That hurts the Second Amendment right there. That hurts it big time. You know, um, what? And, and it's something that the ATF looked at several times and said that this is not a machine gun. Several times, under Obama included, they looked at it and said, not a machine gun. And then he made an executive order, made it into a machine gun. It sets bad precedent. And if we don't somehow uh, remove that, then they can go in and do that with anything. And, and Or any president can come in, make an executive order, or push the ATF, right? into yeah. into saying hey this thing is a machine gun now you can't have it sorry go ahead yeah they just changed the def definition of a machine gun to fit whatever they wanted to right who, who to say that their next thing is a uh, match grade trigger since they do speed up the rate of fire mm -hmm. is now a machine gun right right and um the goa amongst um, other folks out there have uh, something out on this which i shared on social media um, for folks to get out there, if people are watching this and they're like, listen, what can I do about this? Get in touch with the people that represent you in Congress and tell them hell no to this. You know, this time to like make phone calls, write letters, uh, reach out to these people, speak to them on social media and let them know that we're definitely not going for this. Uh, Barr, in, 90, in 1991, when I was researching it, Barr was for semi-auto and magazine bans. 
amongst other things, right? Yeah. Bar has a history of anti-gun mm-hmm. stuff. That's why, yeah. for example, the GOA came out so hard against Barr. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so this is why, like, even when he when he was getting confirmed, even people on our side were really not supportive of Barr. And um, th- like I said, this is just one thing. This is just one thing. I think the reason why Trump wants to slow this down is obviously we're heading into an election year. But I, if people think that this is going to get slowed down until next year, I don't believe that. Uh, Democrats are pushing for something now. So they might be telling us that they're slowing it down, kind of like to keep us in a sleep state. You know, um, and then the next thing we know, we've got this and it's on the president desk, president's desk. He signs it and he's thinking that he can get support from uh, from the left by doing it. Um, let me see here. I'm going to pull I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull up the memo and throw it up here on the screen so we can go through it point by point. If you don't mind, John. Yeah, go right right ahead. Yeah. So let's see what we've got here. OK. Um, idea for new unlicensed commercial let me move it over i uh, idea for new unlicensed commercial sale background checks and the background of it says under existing law background checks are required for all firearm transfers right through federal firearms licensees ffls um i happen to i happen to be one of those detailed information about the transfer is captured in form 4473 which the ffl must maintain for 20 years Many commercial sales are conducted outside of FFLs without any background check or record keeping requirements. It goes on to say, uh, consistent with the matching Toomey draft legislation, a background check requirement would be extended to all advertised commercial sales, including sales at gun shows. Um, background checks would be conducted either through an FFL or through a newly created class of licensed transfer agents. So that makes me like, what does that mean? <laughs> it's what very is, ambiguous. And yeah, what does that mean? Like uh, licensed transfer agents. What is I, that I exactly? guess it's going to be a new form of an FFL, but not really an FFL. They're what? just going to do transfers and not. What is that, like a notary? Uh, well, they're going to be running background checks. Yeah, so I know. Doing the 4473s and stuff, I, they're just not going to carry any inventory. Yeah, and what I w- one of the things I've been talking about, I have a video out on this, is um, is an app. Like one of the things they were floating is an app. I don't know if you heard anything about this, yes. but an app so that everyone, if you if you do a private sale to a neighbor or whatever it is, you have to use this app to background check them. Um, have you heard anything about that? What do you think about that particular thing? Anything that stores your information digitally will lead to a register. Would lead to a uh, registration. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't like so it doesn't specifically sound like in here that they're going in that direction of the app, but we have no idea what this new class what this new class means because I, I just don't we already have FFLs. You know, if you have to go to an FFL, you have to go to a store to do it. Um, you obviously have to go there, you have to pay money and all that kind of stuff. It seems like when we go on here, people will see that they're still involving the FFLs. But um, this class of licensed transfer agent, I don't know. This, th- yeah, that's too ambiguous for me. Okay, so it says license. To go on, it's, it's trying to explain what they think a licensed transfer agent is. It says um, here, and I'll throw it up so people can see what I'm talking about. Um, licensed transfer agents would would not carry firearm inventory, but would be authorized by ATF to initiate background checks for private sales through the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, NICS, including both A, verifying the buyer's identity, and B, communicating with NICS. So maybe these people are going to have some kind of app, right? Yeah. Um, Who are these people going to be? Where are they going to be? I don't know. Okay, so then it goes on. A commercial seller who is not a licensed dealer and does not want an FFL or transfer agent to retain a Form 4473 identifying the buyer could go to an FFL or transfer agent to conduct a background check before completing transfer and generate two forms. One, a bill of sale 
slash chain of title. This form would record the details of the sale, including the identities of the buyer and seller, and be the seller's responsibility. Okay, so basically now your firearm has to have a title, like it's a car or something like that. Yeah, the chain of custody form. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, that's, I don't know, man. And then two, a new form slash certification. This form would be a certification from the FFL or transfer agent memorializing a successful background check, including the serial number, date, and confirmation code. It could also be the seller's identity. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, we're going to come back and talk about that. I just want to go through here so everyone knows what's in the memo. Background checks would be conducted based on the same information as Form 4473. Um, if a denial occurs, a referral would be made to law enforcement. So what they're saying is if you're doing a private sale, you'd have to do this. It's going to be the same thing as a 4473. If a denial happens, you won't be able to, to obviously sell that gun to someone, and they, that person would be referred to, to refer to law enforcement. Okay, if the transaction proceeds, the new form certification uh, in brackets would be generated and sent to the seller. The FFL or transfer agent would not retain any identifying information about the buyer. Therefore, the only documentation reflecting the identity of the buyer would be the bill of sale in custody of the seller. So now you're like an FFL. You're going to have to retain this thing. Yeah, you're going to have to retain it. And the there is civil penalty if you don't. Yeah. So, yeah, sellers could retain these records on their own, but many would be expected to choose voluntarily to have the FFL or transfer agent store the records. So right. it, it's, it's kind of putting pressure on them. Like, well, you can store them your, yourself, but if something happens yeah. and you can't form, form, then you're legally responsible. Yeah, exactly. Like you can't talk about you lost it in a boating accident, which everyone's trying to rely on. And I'm like, that's, I know that's a funny joke or a meme, but people should get over that. You can't, these people are too smart for that. Let me read the last part and then John, John and I will talk about this. The record keeping requirements would be enforced via civil penalties also. So in other words, if you don't do this, there's going to be civil penalties. Also, if a firearm were used in a crime, the seller would enjoy the same civil immunity as FFLs if he could produce the forms from his own records or from those maintained by the FFL or transfer agent. Um, yeah, man, I, I don't know. This just I, I don't like the I, I don't like the sound of any of this. I don't like the sound of it either. Yeah, it's it's a registration basically what it is yeah they can say all they want to that no one's keeping track of this i guarantee you they're keeping track of it yeah it's it's a way to get universal background checks through without saying universal background checks right and then also what they're saying is if you don't they're setting people up for for civil liability you know um now obviously when you sell a car there's a title that goes along with that car now what they're trying to do is create a title this is why i think it's like this is because people are going to say well why do you guys think it's uh you know it's registration because they're in this thing it says they're creating a chain of title yeah i don't know how like is there another way to uh imagine what that is it's a title and so they want to create a title for firearms okay and they're talking they're like this now is going to be the procedure it's this is not just a procedure that's solely for private sales they want everyone to do this so if you're an ffl you're now going to have to do this bill of sale slash chain of title thing and basically they someone's going to have to maintain this either way that this goes so once you have a title that's registration and then so c consider this like with a car right if i have a car i sell my car to you okay Am I responsible right now if you take that car and do something horrible? No, but I, but they're setting people up to be. Yeah, that's th this is what's going on here because if you you know, and I think that this is the same kind of thing. If you if you have a firearm, you sell it to someone that you know, neighbor, friend, family member, or whatever. And so far as you know, at that time, there's nothing wrong with that person. They're not going to do anything. And then something happens to them in their life. And then they, they become, you know, for whatever reason, something goes wrong, right? And they do something and they get sued. 
even if it's defending themselves, by the way. So let's say they defend themselves against someone trying to attack them, but the people's family decide to sue. Could, could that person come along and go, hey, I'm suing you because you sold this gun to them? You know? And then they're trying to say in here, in the last part, or the second to last part, um, that if if you do this, that you will get the same, You what was it? Um, same immunity. Yeah, you'll get the same immunity. But from what we've seen in the news, there's people right now trying to sue manufacturers, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, they definitely are. Um, the immunity clause was put in uh, in the Firearms Protection Act of uh, 80. 86 i believe mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah i'm not i'm not exactly sure but i know that there's lawyers out there testing that right now they are they definitely are uh yeah, yeah. they definitely are bushmaster yeah. for example yeah so um i don't know man this is like there's there's a lot of bad stuff here and i think that um what you said i agree that this is going to be a form of registration because there's a title and they're calling it chain of title. Chain of title <laughs> is something solid that you could follow along, the, you know, you could follow the chain, right? A chain means one link and another link and another link and another link, right? So now you're creating these links of what happened with this thing. What the hell is that, man? Isn't, isn't that registration? Definitely is. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is uh, this is another terrible thing that I think is happening um, and bars out there shopping it around. And I think um, there's already on the Republican side, there's some there's some guys that are pushing back against it from what I could see in the news. Uh, but yeah. It, yeah, it doesn't bode well. I think we've definitely we're looking. This is just one thing. And I don't think that the, uh, the folks on the left are going to be happy with just this one thing. But this yeah. one thing itself is going to be. A de facto registration that they're going to be able to push through if they make it happen and uh, the one thing that i want to say before we wrap up everything or you know before i let you say what you have to say here is remember this is just a memo so by the time congress gets their hands on this and people start going well i'm not gonna vote for this unless you put this thing in and you put this thing in this could get really really complicated right or wrong they can get really complicated. Bills now are sizes of books mm -hmm. with all the add-ons and everything else. Yeah, we're just seeing the ideas that they're shopping around. But by the time um, a lot of those happy idiots out there in Congress get their hands on this and start putting in all the – like if it sounds bad to you now, it could be really bad is what I'm trying to say. By the it, time that becomes a law. It definitely will be bad. Yeah. And meanwhile, Trump's saying he's not going to do anything to hurt the uh, Second Amendment. This particular thing, in my opinion, um, hurts the Second Amendment. So um, what would you say, John, to folks out there who, because I know I, I post these videos, I put stuff up, people are getting really frustrated. What would you say to the folks out there that are getting frustrated? One, what can they do and how can they help uh, deal with all this frustration? Contact your representatives. Mm -hmm. Go out there, let them know that if they vote for any of this anti-gun BS that you're not going to vote for them, mm -hmm. that they're going to lose your support. Make phone calls. Yeah, absolutely. Call, email them. Do everything you can. Mm -hmm. uh, let other gun owners know. Mm -hmm. Share the information. Share this video that mm -hmm. Hank's putting out mm -hmm. so it gets out there so people are aware. What they want to do is they want to um, operate in the dark mm -hmm. where people don't notice what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So when you shine a light on them, they're like cockroaches. Usually they just scatter. Yeah. Let's use the power of social media that we have and share this stuff and get it out there. I think this is one of the reasons why they're coming down and gun guys like myself or people talking about, not just gun guys. I mean, things people talking about stuff in general that they don't want us to talk about and they don't want us to put out to the public because you're not going to be able to rely on CNN to really tell you what's going on here or give you a valid opinion um, that's not biased on their side of what's going on. Obviously, we're biased on our side. I'm, I'm biased on the side of the Constitution and the Second Amendment. Um, so, yes, definitely push back. Support support organizations that, that you believe are pro-Second Amendment. Um, I'm supporting the GOA, but there's lots of other ones out there. Uh, there's Second Amendment Foundation. We can go on and on. There's the NRA, for that matter, right? Uh, 
they may not be as um, they, they may maybe you've been hobbled a little bit here with things that are going on, but there's tons of or, or several organizations out there that are pro Second Amendment. Support them. Let these um, let your representatives know what you think about this. Um, and then also, John, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, you can find me at over at Amaland. Um, if you go down to the contributors, they can find me under there. I do have a YouTube channel that I launched recently. Mm-hmm. Okay. Since my life kind of got blown up by YouTube, mm-hmm. um, and that is John Crump too. Okay. Search that you can you go to find me. Right. Yeah. Just look for John Crump. He's writing for Ammo Land. Um, uh, I believe you're part of GOA as well. I am part of GOA. I am the Virginia State Director for GOA. Absolutely. There you go. So um, I'm going to end it here. I'm probably going to split these videos into two or maybe I'll have like one thing I'll put up on the podcast channel here. I'm not sure. I think we, we've like gone on here for almost 40 minutes. So I might split it just to make it easier for everyone because they're kind of two separate things with the same thing. Thanks a lot, John. Um, I look forward to doing this kind of stuff with you again. I think it adds like an extra dimension. I could just get up there and people could just see my pretty face. But now they get to see two pretty faces. And at least get to, you know. <laughs> it's the new partnership. <laughs> yes. Thanks a lot. Thanks to the folks at Ammo Land for helping us out. Um, okay, that's it, everyone. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified whenever we put this stuff up. Make sure you check out Ammo Land. I'm Hank Strange. I'll see you. I'm out of here. Peace.